Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my Crime and Policing channel. In today's session, we're going to jump into some legislation looking at Section 1 of PACE. Now, PACE stands for the Police and Criminal Evidence Act and is instrumental in how the police go about their day-to-day -day activities. The PACE guide, the manual, is like a Bible for Bobbies, right? This book tells them everything they need to know to make sure they're doing everything lawfully. Before PACE, it was a bit sketchy, not going to lie. Like if you've seen Life on Mars and things like that, um, stuff like that, that did actually happen. So really aggressive interviewing techniques, oppressive interview techniques. I mean, if you look at the cases like Stephen Kitchko, the Maguire um, 7, Birmingham 6, all that kind of stuff, um, there were some really nasty techniques used in interview, which subsequently led to um, miscarriages of justice. But... The introduction of PACE in 1984 put a stop to that because we've got some specific guidelines which tells officers what they can and cannot do. And that PACE, Police and Criminal Evidence Act manual, came about because of a huge event in relation to Section 1 of PACE, which is stopped search. So the power of police to stop and search people. So what is a stop search then? A stop search, or Section 1 search of PACE, where a constable and officer uh, can stop you and search you if they've got reasonable grounds to suspect you've got on you um, a stolen property or a prohibited article which would be like an offensive weapon a firework um, in fact i'm going to read the legislation to you because i like to make sure i get it bob on because if you are studying your um, initial police learn development diplomas all that kind of stuff you do in the apprenticeship route whatever it is i want to make sure you get the correct legislation words and all so as I've mentioned before, I do recommend going on legislation.gov.uk. I mean, that's got laws from 1267 right through to today, and it's updated all the time. I mean, I'm not employed by these people, but you can give me a job if you want. Give me some money. I like money. I don't have any of it. So <laughs> I'm a teacher. Come on. Okay, anyway, so I'm reading now from legislation.gov.uk. So Police and Crimin Criminal Evidence Act 1984, Section 1. And this is up to date. Anyway, so, stop search, section one pace search, a power of constable to stop and search persons, vehicles, etc. So a constable may exercise any power conferred by this section in any place to which at the time when he proposes to exercise the power, the public or any section of the public has access on payment or otherwise, as a right or by virtue of express or implied permission. So you're somewhere in public, right? Even if you've got to pay to get in like a fair or something in any other place to which people have ready access at the time when they propose to exercise that power, but it's not a dwelling, so it's not a house. Not, you can't just walk in someone's house and search them under a section one of PACE. There are lots of different searching powers that I'll go through, but your section one PACE search has to be somewhere where um, the public or any other section of the public have access. I hope that makes sense. Um, so also, the constable may search any person or vehicle anything which is in or on a vehicle Ooh. for stolen or prohibited articles uh, which um let's have a look it could be a firework it could be an offensive weapon like i meant made before so if it's made or adapted for the use in connection of an offense as well so that's an article if you've got a crowbar or something like that you're gonna go and burgle something um so all this kind of stuff anyway and the, and the offenses that that subsection applies to is like burglary theft um and the stuff under the theft act fraud etc um criminal damage as well um anything under section one of criminal damage act which i'm going to do separately because criminal damage is one of my favorite areas because who knew some of the things that classify as criminal damage right anyway so yeah that's just section one pace one search right so if you are walking in fact, I've got a story, a real true life story. My little brother, um, Hi Ru, he was at college to be a chef, studying to be a chef, and he got um, all these chef knives and stuff in his bag. And he got stop searched by some police officers because they thought it was acting a bit sus. I mean, I'm not really sure what the grounds were on this one, by the way, if you were the one who stop searched him. Uh, you know, he came walking out of college, apparently looking a bit suspicious. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, but they did search him and in his bag they found a load of knives. But before they said that, it's like, is there anything in your bag? And he went, yeah, I've got a shitload of knives. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so sorry about the swears. And they were like, 
but and then he confirmed you know i'm, I'm starting to be a chef and they found his chef whites and stuff like that and sent him on his merry way because he'd got a reason to have them on him he was walking from college to home however if he just got them in his bag and he's walking around town um he's not been to college or home not making that journey there and back he'd get done for carrying an offensive weapon but we'll go through offensive weapons at a different time so yeah they can stop search you anytime in the public if and only if they've got reasonable grounds to suspect you've got something on you because if you are stopping someone you're detaining them that's affecting article 5 of the human rights act so if you're going to stop someone to search them you've got to have a damn good reason to do that because you're affecting the rights come on you can't just be like oh sorry you're ginger let's search you i can say ginger because i am a ginger natural as well um yeah you can't just search someone for kicks for laugh and that's because of pace pace came in and stopped that and well if you're going to do a pace one search you have to have certain things in place before you even start there's a mnemonic called go wisely in most of um, the police forces in south yorkshire we call it isa galloway which sounds like i'm speaking um welsh i wish i could speak welsh because it sounds so beautiful that when welsh people speak please send me a video of you um telling me stuff in the welsh accent and language because i absolutely love it but isa galloway is um the first three things you have to say before you start a stop search are your identity the station you're from and the object of your search so hi i'm um, pc henderson's relish uh, i am from rotherham and i'm looking for a knife so you've got to tell them who you are what station you're from and what you're looking for before you start the search if you don't that's an unlawful search so the rest of them your galloway your g is the grounds in which you're searching them for You've got to have some reasonable grounds here. You've got to have reasonable grounds to suspect they've got it on them. Looking shifty is not reasonable grounds to suspect something. Plenty of people look shifty, right? I mean, I look a bit shifty. I get followed around shops. I've got a decent enough wage, guys. I can afford to buy my toiletries. Just because I'm a bit of a goth, they follow me around. You've got a reasonable grounds to suspect they've got something on them. So what could that be? Perhaps there's been a witness who said that um, someone's at the bus stop and they've got something that looks like a knife on them or CCTV have picked out something that looks, you know, you, you match the description of somebody that we've been looking for in relation to a burglary or a theft, blah, 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 blah. You're looking for something. They've got reasonable grounds to suspect they've got it on them. You've got to have that or you've not, not anything, okay? So you've got your grounds. Your E in ISO Galloway is your entitlement. So everybody who gets searched is entitled to a copy of that search. Remember this if you ever get searched, by the way, because if it's unlawful, they're in big bubba, okay? So, identity, station, object, your grounds, you're entitled to a record of the search. L is your legal power. So, um, it's a section one of PACE search. You might do drug searches as well, but that'll come under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Um, and we'll come to that in a different time. Uh, your legal power, in this case, is a section one, um, PACE one search your gel way so w is your warrant card you're a warranted officer conducting this search you want to show them your your little warrant card just to prove who you are right uh, and y stands for you so you are detained for the purpose of this search you are detained you are taking away their liberty you're affecting article 5 of the human rights act let's just remember all that so thanks to pace the police and criminal evidence act You've got to have reasonable grounds to suspect someone has something on them that you're looking for. It's stolen, it's prohibited article before you do a search, okay? Can't just do it for kicks, for a laugh. Got to have reasonable grounds to suspect and they have to be reasonable. Um, okay, so where did it come from then? Why do we do this? Oh, one more thing before I go into that, there is a section 60, um, like a stop search thing as well. So it's a section 60 in order. That means that the police can stop and search people within like an area because they might have some intel, some reasonable grounds to believe that something's going to kick off in a big area. So a section 60 order will put into place so that everyone can be searched in that area. Very rare, but that also can happen. Okay, so let's go back in time into history. So I mentioned the Pace Act in 1984 before I was born. Just um, 1984, the Pace Act. Why do we have this? We've got a bit of a bad history in the police. We're getting stuff a bit wrong. And if you've seen, like I mentioned before, Life on Mars, stuff like that, or if you've read any case studies about interviews and stop searching stuff prior to that, 
Not all of them were very good, very positive at all. So thanks to the PACE Act, times have changed. And it's, by the way, it's continually changing all the time. Yes, we see horrible stuff in the news about some police officers and that stuff is diabolical. But there's also millions of officers around the world, um, you know, hundreds of thousands in the UK doing a fantastic job every day. So let's not forget about those two. But let's go back in time. I love history, as you know. Prior to 1984, something terrible happened and lessons were learned and that's why PACE came in. It was in 1981 on the 10th of April in Brixton in London where something really, really, really big happened and it had to happen for stuff to change. And the citizens of Brixton who um, were involved did exactly the right thing. I mean, because things changed because of it. You might be thinking, what are you on about? Uh, especially if you were born, you know, <clears throat> after 2000. Makes me feel really old when my students are born after 2000. So let's talk about the Brixton riots. Brixton riots, April the 10th, 1981. So Brixton is a suburb of London. London um, is a fab night out, by the way. And if you're in Brixton these days, it's a, some really good pubs. There's that one on the corner. I don't know what it's called. It's got like, like a festival outside or something. It's a really good night out. I love Brixton. But back in the 80s, it was totally different. The people of Brixton were oppressed. So that the citizens who lived there were like continually being targeted by the police purely because of their ethnicities. So there's people of colour in Brixton who had been kind of housed there by the government um, and then they were being penalised for being there and for not maybe having jobs and stuff like that because we invited so many people over to the UK to work with us and to become part of our civilization that we treated them like cack. It, it was really bad. And yeah, so there was a lot of oppression in that area and it went on for a long time. So what would happen is uh, young youths of the area, people of colour, were being constantly targeted by white police officers, constantly. And just as it was getting really bad, in the infinite wisdom, the Met Police decided to pull an operation together called Operation Swamp. Now then, Operation Swamp was where the Metropolitan Police, mainly white police officers, flooded Brixton in an attempt to clear up the streets. That's what they said, we're going to clean up the streets. So if you do actually want to learn more about this, there's a documentary on YouTube called Brixton in Our Own Words, and it's from the officers and from the citizens at the time. And the police officers in those interviews say they were told specifically to target young male people of colour. They were told to do that. Right, okay, so I'm not just I'm not just preaching this is what happened. So Op Swamp flooded Brixton with one target in mind, young male people of colour and turn them over, turn the pockets up, get everything out of them to clean up the streets. Now then, let's say that was you, your family, your brother, your uncle, your dad, um, and you're already being targeted by these people. And now everyone is being targeted. It becomes an us and them, doesn't it? It becomes, it's like a boiling pot. The lid is waiting to pop off this pot. And then rumours swirl of police violence against one of the citizens. And that is it, uproar. And it kicks off. And there was police violence, by the way. If you look at those interviews I mentioned on Brixton in our own words, there's a story there from uh, two uh, elderly ladies who say when they saw a police officer, they thought they were safe. And then they saw a police officer kicking the heck out of a young gentleman, a young person of colour. Disgusting behaviour. So, yeah, it all kicked off. And because of the kickoff, it changed the world forever, it changed policing in the UK forever. So, yeah, after three days, I think it finished on the 12th of, um, of April, after all this time, writing, smashing buildings, setting fire to cars, it booted off, right? And then obviously it stopped eventually. It, it, it all stopped eventually. Thankfully, nobody was killed. I mean, there were plenty of people injured, caused millions of pounds of the damage, but, the message was told, we won't stand for this anymore. No more of this oppression. You can't keep doing this. You can't keep coming in, kicking us in and targeting these innocent people. Give us a chance, all right? So yeah, that's what happened. And because of the kickoff, and if a riot is declared, by the way, that's saying that the police have lost control. You'll only see every, you don't get many riots in the UK because a riot is when the police have admitted they've lost control. 
and that means the police are susceptible to pay all the costs back. Okay, so a riot's happened, they lost control. And with that kind of thing, you get an inquest. And an inquest was had. The Lord Scarman report came out of that. Now, the Lord Scarman report found that the Metropolitan Police were institutionally racist. Now, that's a very powerful thing to say. And it's also a message that was captured in the McPherson report after the murder of Stephen Lawrence the Metropolitan Police are institutionally racist. That message came out again. But back in 1981, that's what they said. Oh dear, right? What we're going to do about this? That's when the Pace Act was born. You have to have reasonable grounds to suspect and it can't be based on someone's ethnicity. Come on, guys. What's that going to do with you? You need that actual evidence. So, yeah, you can't do it based on someone's ethnicity, religion or perceived religion. Because if you do that, guys, that's a hate crime. You can't do that. You can't penalise someone just for how they look, right? Anyway, so yeah, the Lord's Garm report came out institutionally racist. And because of that, the police decided they needed to change. And that is what's wonderful about these things, these stories. Something had to change. And it did, thankfully. So not only did we get the Pace Act, we also started... Well, the Metropolitan Police start recruiting better, trying to get more of a cross, um, a cross network of the actual uh, population that reflected how we were at London at the time. So all the time, I love the fact that in London and where I live up north, I live in quite um, a multicultural society. And that's fantastic, right? Because people bring all these different experiences. They bring, it makes it so much more rich and so much more interesting. You learn so much from each other. And having that representation back in the police force makes it work better. If you go back to the Peelian principles, so Sir Robert Peel, the first Met Bobby kind of guy, I'll come to him in our history lesson next time. Um, the Peelian principles, the first policing principles, were that we police by consent of the public. And that means that you are the public. Your police officers are you. We represent you, we police for you. And that's what they tried to do with targeted recruitment. And a lot more training as well happened. And the sanctions, I mean, I worked for the police for a long time. I don't anymore. And I can tell you now that where I, especially where I was, there's a zero tolerance to racism. Absolute zero tolerance. And I know it still happens sometimes, which is diabolical. And if it does get found out at work, they get come down on like a ton of bricks of people who are behaving in that way. It's not tolerated which is obviously amazing. So yeah, thanks to the Brixton riots in 1981, the world of policing changed forever. We have the PACE Act, uh, so it's Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, which is, like I mentioned, a guide, a manual for police officers, for Bobby's Bible and how to do it right. And if you are going to stop search somebody, you need to have a good reason to do it because you are affecting their human rights. And make sure you just, you know, you don't do it just for laugh. And if you are being stopped, searched by a police officer, just, you know, let's go on with it, really. As long as they're doing all the right things, it could obviously want to be eliminated from their inquiries, right? And if they're looking for a ginger girl in a rock band T-shirt who looks like they've been carrying a knife. I mean, it's not me, is it? I don't carry knives around with me. I'll be like, yeah, all right, whatever. Search, search me. Because, you know, they've got a power to do that. And if it makes our streets a little bit safer and eliminates me from their inquiries, I can go on about my day knowing that the streets are a little bit safer where I live. But yeah, that's it for today. I hope that makes sense. I will do a lot more on legislation. But as I've mentioned before, legislation.gov.uk, if you're a, a police officer or you're studying crime and criminology and policing, just use that website. It's free and it's always up to date. Yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, have a great week. Don't commit any crimes. Stay safe and please subscribe to my channel. Apparently, I'm doing this because my friends dared me to do it. This is for you, Carl. <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel. It'll be a crime not to. You made me do that. Bye.